Oh, snap. Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? What's up out there, YouTube? This is SEL0320. It's your boy, Joe Jackson, 030. Representing JVS, so we're back again for a brand new uh, TV show review for Jessica Jones. This is going to be episodes uh, 6 to 7. So the name of these episodes are You're a Winner for episode 6 and then Top Shelf Perverts for episode 7. Um, episode 6, it kind of surrounds Luke and Jessica. Um, basically, um, Jessica, she, 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 in my opinion, I feel like she's really infatuated by Luke. Like she really cares about him, she really loves him. Um, but she gets that bombshell that hit about the fact that, you know, like he cares about her, but he's trying to figure out what happened to his wife. And he knows that somebody has information on it, like what happened really during the car crash. That it wasn't really deemed a, a vehicular car crash that killed his wife, there was something more. And um, that's how the episode starts off. But even with that, like, I like the fact that Malcolm is trying to protect Jessica. Um, like he's gotten off of his addiction, he's been going to these meetings, and like he's really overprotective of Jessica. Like, cause when Luke showed up on his motorcycle or whatever, he had some choice words about him. Um, but he did mention everything about Kilgrave, and that added, in my opinion, like a whole different depth to their um, to their story arc. Um, because it wasn't just on a physical thing. Um, he really showed genuine concern and worry about her situation. You know what I'm saying? Like with everything that she's going through. Uh, I like that part about this episode. What, what were some of the things you liked about it as far as, I guess, with Luke and, and Jessica and even just like the whole dynamics of what was going on in this episode? Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, leading up to him finding out what actually happened that because like the build up was definitely there yeah um, it was it's like the build up and like it, it, it was they were leading up to that point and that whole you know like you definitely feel for Luke because um because like he's going through all these run through all these hoops and it's like he doesn't know yeah you know Yeah. Um, even in the back fold of the episode, like, Kilgrave, you find out he's buying this house. And, like, that sequence when he had the person at the house, like, the Asian guy, it was really scary because I thought he was going to, like, tell him to chop his own tongue out or something crazy. And instead, he's trying to use control, like, as far as, like, instead of just impulsively telling people what to do. Because he, he stopped himself for a second and then he was like, look, take this million dollars and do what I want you to do. Um, and I think he's doing it for Jessica um, in his own way, which is really strange. Um, but you find out that he bought Jessica's old house. And just like Joe was talking about in the episode as well, like there's a, there's a real falling out, literally, with Luke and with Jessica because he thinks he's confronted the person um, that killed his wife like the bus driver and like he he had made a mention that when he found out like what happened to his wife before that it took eight guys to really just hold him down uh, and he was about to kill his bus driver and like Jessica spilled the beans and it was it was a really powerful sequence um, but all the sequences they were in like between Luke and him uh, Luke and her like it was it was really good I, that was one of my favorite episodes actually um, so episode six, I actually gave a nine point five as well. That was, that was a really good episode to me. What did you give that one? That's why I was rating. Mm. Mm. Probably give it a nine. Probably give it a nine and a half. Nine point five. So we both got the same on that one. Nine point five on both. Um, so then now we got episode seven though. It's really the falling out. Like Jessica is unraveling and I, I mentioned that in the review before like she was literally losing it uh, emotionally mentally um but like she literally was in like the trash like she got thrown out um, because she had said one of the running jokes in the first the episode before was that she called herself a piece of crap 
And he denied that about her. Luke denied that about her. And then after everything happened, he's like, yeah, I confirm you're a piece of crap. Yeah, he said something else. Um, and that's what she's really boiling down into. Like, she goes and finds Hargrave's wife and basically almost kills her. Like, he threatens, she threatens her life. Like, Jessica does some really questionable things in this episode, as well as, I think it's at the beginning that um, you find that Kilgrave was in her apartment. Yeah. Was that the beginning of the episode? Yeah, it did. Like, this episode was downright just wild. I didn't realize how much power this dude had. I think it was like episode 6 too, where he was at like this game. It was, I don't know if it was poker or something else, but he told everybody to be quiet that was in the area. Um, I forget where he was at. And yeah, 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 he was at a regular restaurant. He told everybody to shut up. And I was like, that's when I realized this dude has so much power. But in this episode, like that, that police station sequence, because like the whole build off of that was like her coming up with this idea to go to the Supermax prison and do this because the dude Ruben, who was in love with her, he just killed him and um, got to the police station. She thought she was going to turn it all in. She had the head. And I mean, Malcolm is a good dude, man. Like, he really loves her. Like, he really loves her as a friend. He got Tris on it, like, on, on the case as well. The only thing I didn't like was the cop was keeping things quiet. He wasn't telling Trish. And I was pissed off about it. I didn't like that part about it. But that, that police sequence, that, to me, was like, that made this episode, for me, almost a 10. Um... What did you like about this episode? Uh, everything you mentioned, man. I pretty much like. Um, yeah, I mean, that joint was crazy. Because I didn't expect it to go down how I did at all. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect her to jump into the river to retrieve the body. And then for her to go into the uh, detective's office or be in the interrogation room. And the detective like questioned her so much. Yeah, I didn't even expect that. Nor did I expect um, actual Kilgrave to even show up at the uh, precinct. So yeah. a lot of things happened I did not anticipate at all. Yeah, man, he even brought her to her old house. Like it's like he said to her that he was in love with her, and I was like, this dude is mental. Like he's straight up like this is the thing though. This is like I don't know how to explain it, but his character is straight up evil. But the actor plays it in such a way that he does a good job. But it's like I empathize with him. I don't, and there's no reason to. It's just off of pure acting. It's like a part of me is looking at him. And it's like he believes everything he's saying is true. And it's like, there's a part of me that emotionally is like, am I really believing this dude? Like, I mean, it's like, it's weird. I empathize with how well he's acting. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, like, <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't. It's almost like his acting is indicative of the powers that the character has. I see what you're saying, yeah. And that's weird. I don't think I've come across anything like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, because, like, one thing he was talking to uh, her about was, like, he was basically saying all his life he had this power. He was never denied anything he wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and on that, I, I was like, okay, so he really doesn't understand what it's like to be normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With that kind of power, like, he's always had it. You know? And that's like, wow. Like, you know? Like, yeah. That's, that's crazy. Like, and I kind of felt bad for him. Yeah. That he doesn't live a normal life. You know what I'm saying? That he never felt that way. Yeah, and, so but, there's, denied. but there's no reason to. Based off of what he's done. And what he's planning on doing. I mean, even like, the fact that Jessica Jones, she planned on taking herself into a Supermax prison. She was saying her goodbyes. Luke, Luke had gone somewhere. Gosh knows where. That's probably going to play on to his story arc later on. I mean, she brought in a head, a severed head of the dude that she kind of cared about. Um, and it's just like she unraveled, you know, but to me, even though she didn't go to Supermax prison, she went with Kilgrave to her house. So it's almost like she was condemning herself to being locked up anyway. It was like, it's worse than her going to prison because she's with the worst kind of person to be around. 
So, I don't know. I thought it was a really good episode. I actually gave this one a 10. Um, what'd you get this episode? Rating wise? Give it 10. Give it 10, too. So, you got two 10s. JVS on this episode. Believe it or not, y'all, it's 1 o'clock. We got a lot of editing. Well, I got a lot of editing, too. And um, we're going to pick back up tomorrow. So, we got three more reviews to do. Starting off with episode 8 and 9. Uh, we probably won't get to them until the afternoon sometime because uh, we both got to work and uh, we got a lot of stuff we got to work on as well. So, y'all, I really appreciate y'all for watching. Hopefully, y'all have been enjoying the reviews and uh, the episodes, the series has been pretty awesome so far. And I'm curious to see where it's going to go. Um, one thing I'll say and a note is that I don't know what's going to happen. I really feel as though I. I can't anticipate something happening. So, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. And you got anything else, Jim? Before we get out of here? We out. Peace, y'all.